They come lording it up into the pub. Yeah, did all right on that one, didn't I? Yeah, made 75 grand on a little flip. Bought a property, refurbished it, sold it, made 75 grand. Mm -mm. <laughs> bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. Throw your hands up, get you with it, drop it. This is probably the most valuable thing you're gonna learn ever about property investment and refurbishment. Here we go, Are you ready for it? Refurbishing properties adds no net value to your property. There, I've said it. Let me explain, let me break this down because this is gonna be really pissing people off. So, because they're gonna think, what's he talking about? I bought a property before, I've refurbished it, I sold it and I made money. This guy is a joke. Any credibility that I thought he had before is now out the window. Listen, calm down, hear me out. So, if you've bought a property that needed work and you yourself have done all the blood, sweat and tears or quite a lot of the blood, sweat and tears, you know, like painting it, being a labourer, you know, wheelbarrowing bricks, carrying things out to the skip, perhaps you've dabbled at a bit of kitchen fitting or bathroom fitting, you get where I'm coming from here. What you've done, you've actually just given yourself a job. That's no different than going down to the supermarket and trading your time for money, okay? Now, with a refurbishment project, it is my true belief that you need to make that refurbishment project work without you working in it. You need to work on it. So when you do your figures, you need to be calculating, I'm gonna buy this property for X, I'm gonna get those builders at this rate and these materials, we're gonna spend X amount, and the profit after all fees is going to be this. What I don't factor in is trading my own time for money because that's just giving yourself a job. That's not being an investor. That's buying a property, giving yourself a role and a job, and then calling that employed income from yourself net profit through being an investor. I'm not buying it. So that's refurb bullshit card number one. Number two is people that buy a property that needs work, they do it up, Perhaps maybe they rent it out for a period of time or perhaps they're just doing it on weekends because they've got a day job as well. And it takes them a good few months to actually get the property done. And on the, at the time they agreed to buy the property, it could have been eight to 12 weeks or so. That's gone by before they actually completed and got the keys. Then it might take them another four or five months, maybe longer to do the property up. And by the time they actually put the property on the market, they've had quite a passage of time that's gone by where the market growth may have gone up anyway. So what I'm saying is, <laughs> sorry, it's gonna be pissing so many people off. So, that which I love. So let's say the property's gone up over that time, 20,000 pounds. You didn't make that through painting a wall or changing a kitchen for another new kitchen. You did not. It went up, it went up 20,000 anyway. So. If you bought it for 200,000, you, you did nothing. You would have sold it for 220 over that time if you hadn't done anything. So you, that 20,000 pound of profit would have, would have been made anyway. Do you see what I'm saying? Bullshit refurb number three. So the property's worth, let's say 200, but you managed to negotiate and you buy it for 175,000. Did you make 25, that 25,000 pound discount through painting, through putting in a bathroom suite? You didn't, right? You already banked the 25,000 pounds at the beginning when you bought the property 25,000 pounds cheap. 25,000 pounds less than someone else would have done. And the reason why someone else would have done is because there's, there's so many buyers out there that really want to buy properties that need work. They're not looking to make a profit. What they don't want to do, they don't want to buy a property, let's say for 250,000, that's all done up. They hate the kitchen, they hate the bathroom, so they rip it all out and then they put their own kitchen and bathroom in. So there was nothing wrong with the kitchen and bath that was in there. They just didn't like it, okay? So then they buy it for 250, spend 50 grand on it. So they've spent 300, but the property's still only worth 250 because when they bought it for 250, it was still all done up, just not to their taste. So there's loads of buyers out there that are really dead keen to buy something for 200,000. That's crap, needs refurbishing. They spend 50,000 pounds on it, and they don't care that it's only worth 250 when it's done because they haven't overpaid. They're not in negative equity, right? And whilst those buyers exist, and so long as the estate agent is correctly valuing the property, you cannot make money through doing a refurbishment project unless 
Number one, you're trading your time for money and you are actually becoming the laborer. Two, if you're factoring in how much the market is grown by over the duration of the time it's taking you to refurbish that project yourself, I'm sorry, that, that is not part of the calculation to net value add creation. And number three, bullshit refurb. Number three, you did not create that net profit when you bought it cheap, when you bought it under market value, when there was other buyers out there that were willing to pay 200,000. Now, you may have got your offer accepted of say 175,000 pounds because you said, I'm a cash buyer, I'll do it quick. So the seller favored you. So when we look at this profit creation pie chart here on this example, so you buy the property that's worth 200 for 175. It took you nine months to do it. It went up 20,000 pounds in value over that time. You spent evenings and weekends there over six to nine months, which equated to say 30,000 pounds worth of labor, labor money that you would have otherwise paid to other tradesmen. So what happens here, let's say there was 25,000 pounds worth of material costs. They bought it for 200, they spent 25,000 pounds in materials, they did all the labor themselves and they sell the property for 300. They come lowering it up into the pub, yeah, did all right on that one, didn't I? Yeah, made 75 grand on a little flip. Bought a property, refurbished it, sold it, made 75 grand. Mm -mm. <laughs> bullshit, 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 you didn't. What actually happened is you made 25 grand by buying it cheap, below market value, a BMV strategy. You made 20 grand because it took you so long, the market went up in that value anyway over that time. And you traded your own time in labor of 30 grand over that time. That's how you made 75 grand on this refurb property. Not, you didn't make money on it because you refurbished it. You could have bought it cheap, as you did, 25 grand, done nothing for nine months, waited for it to go up 20 grand. So you could have made 45 grand, sat there doing nothing. And you could have made 30 grand in your day job, doing something else, or even better still, getting another one like this. So not one person has ever been able to demonstrate to me a case study where they made and created net value profit from the actual physical act of refurbishing the property, changing the property from, let's say, something that had an old kitchen, an old bathroom, crappy walls, crappy carpet. They've gone in there, they bought it for, the correct market value, i.e. what someone else would have been prepared to pay for it, which are, as I mentioned earlier, those buyers not looking for profit. So the, so the actual current market value, on the example I've just done was 200,000. So I wanna see an example where they bought it for the current market value, they did not get a BMV discount. And I wanna see that they've employed tradesmen, paid for materials, they haven't been working in it themselves, they've been working on it like a proper investor. And I want to see at the end what the profit is minus what the property value, the capital growth over passage of time went up. I want, to, I want to exclude that. And I want them to show me the net profit they've made from it. I've had nearly 200 people, pissed off people that did not agree with what I was saying. I was on a stage at a property investment show saying this. Oh my God, the abuse. People like going, what's he talking about? I've been doing this for three decades. But I spoke to all these people, well, I, sp I spoke to a lot of these people after the show and we went into their properties in more detail. We got up land registry and we looked at what uh, they bought the property for, what they'd sold the property for. We, we brought out the stats and what the properties had gone up in that time anyway. We talked about how much of their own time they'd spent on it. And they were all like, oh God, we've been, what have we been doing for 30 years? But look, They've, they've been making money, they've been in it, they've been grinding, they've been hustling. So there's nothing wrong with it. But what I'm just saying is, they were blind like I was. Back when I first started these property refurbs, I was so ignorant to this. I didn't know, I had to find out the hard way. But don't get me wrong, you do need to employ the strategy of refurbs together with other strategies in some occasions. So I'm not completely writing off refurbs, I'm just saying, the net value add in isolation, just doing that one strategy 
is, is going to add net value because it isn't. Anyway, I'm waffling again as normal. Make sure you follow. See you in the next video. Throw your hands up if you with it. Drop it.